Good morning guys, it's competition day. I'm gonna weigh myself. Then we're gonna smash some weights. See you guys. This thing was a juice of fatness. Just went in at 91.41 kilograms. Time to get the caffeine overdose. Let's smash the weights. Vi har noe godt! Ja da! Easy! Easy! Ja, vi åpner gass! Kom igjen! Vi har noe godt! Ja da! Ja da! Ja! Det er alt for lett! Ja! Ja da, kom an! Yes! Yes! Ja! Ja da! Jeg skjønner at jeg er jævla tøyt i hoften. Så jeg skjønte det på 85 her. Ja. Så skjønte jeg liksom bare når jeg var helt i bunnen hvis jeg skulle presse opp. Ja. Så skjønte jeg liksom bare litt ubehag i venstre hoften. Ja, det var litt tøyt liksom. Ja. Det ble for fanns tøyd ut siste uken. Eller to ukene. Ja. Men det er faen så mye bra. Det var perfekt. Så nå er det bare å fikse på hoften, så er det benken neste. Ja, ja, ja. Kom igjen, Håkon! 
Your door oh, on for that. Det har du, kom on. Det har du. Men nu kör vi på, okej? Kom on. Kom on. Kom on. Kom on. Kom on. Kom on. Ja, jag tycker det. I'm honestly extremely impressed. He went above and beyond my expectations. He um, he exceeded my expectations big time. Yeah, he uh, did fantastic. The last lift, it means nothing. He uh, for how long he's been doing it and for his progression so far, he's been smashing all the weights. Uh, some mis some mistakes I think he did was probably stressing too much throughout the entire meet, throughout the days before. It really takes a toll, he doesn't eat properly, and uh, which means he weighed like almost two kilos underneath what he could be weighing, which is a lot, which takes away a lot of strength. All throughout the day, uh, his hands were shaking. He was extremely stressed. I didn't get any of it on camera because I was stressed myself. <laughs> But I got all the important stuff, uh, all the lifts, which he nailed, every single one. Uh, the last lift, uh, 250 kilos, uh, he unfortunately did not hit. He's gonna talk about that himself, like how he felt before, during and after. He probably doesn't remember anything during, because he always blacks out when he goes on stage. All in all, it's a successful powerlifting meet. He smashed everything, given the time he's been doing this, it's insane how much he's been accomplished and he's just 20 years old he's a little child he's gonna be he's still a junior for another two plus years and he's just started doing this he's gonna do big things i think so at least in norway he's gonna smash it he's gonna smash the weights i know it his preparation beforehand like 
his peaking program, which goes over, I think, four weeks. You've been seeing it on the channel. Uh, his dedication and his just constant discipline is insane. I keep on cheating my meals all the time. He stays true, I think. I don't know, maybe he's like gobbling something on the side, we don't know. But all the work has paid off, I think, from this leaf, from this meat. This meat he did amazing, really. This little kid is strong. You can see that from all the lifts he's been doing. Uh, he smashes it every time. The last lift meant nothing. It's, he had the strength, he could have pulled 260 easy. During the actual lift, uh, a competition lift, you have 60 seconds to perform the lift from you walk out until the lift is supposed to be finished. And I, th I don't think there was a single lift where he went underneath 20 seconds. Which means that one third of the time he has to take the lift, he just did never utilize. But that does not matter now, he did all the lifts except for the last one. For future powerlifting meets, he should probably take himself more time. In those 60 seconds is a lot of time to finish one rep of a lift. So he should utilize that to the fullest. There was many times he finished the lift and there was half a minute left, probably even more. I don't I didn't pay attention to the clock all the times. You can see it on the lifts themselves uh, on this video, uh, how much time he used, and it was not a lot. He had a lot more time. Taking your time before doing a lift, from making sure you, the bar is laying good on your back, to making sure the grip is proper or you're laying correct on the bench, is extremely important. But he is aware of it. I talked to him during the powerlifting meet and told him to use more time. His coach did the same, and I'm sure for the upcoming meets he will take his time. For the upcoming meets, he needs to reduce stress, take his time, and eat more food. <laughs> it's as simple as that. That pretty much covers it from my end. I'll just let uh, Barry take it away. It's been a few days since my powerlifting meet. To be completely honest, I felt horrible the whole afternoon because 250 was the only goal I had going into this powerlifting meet and to feel 250 drop out of my hands like that it just feels horrible I didn't even want to speak to any of my friends afterwards didn't even say anything, anything to my coach, to my girlfriend, to my mom, to nobody I just wanted to be for myself and listen to music and just calm down the reason why is I felt like I let everyone down. My friends came out to see me. Ulberg took the whole day just to film and hype me up and everything and I felt like I let everyone down. My coach who has been a great supporter who's planned my whole training and everything. I think I thought I like I would lose my coach, lose my friends just because I let them down. I felt pretty good after my weigh-in, after I ate some food. I had a cold, but it doesn't really matter. I had a little bit of a problem breathing to my nose, but that doesn't matter. Uh, the plan was to hit 190 on squat. But uh, after my 185, it felt pretty easy. My coach said uh, that he had already planned for me to take 192.5 kilograms. The only problem on my squat is that I didn't take my time setting up properly. Another problem I had with the squat is that the bar was rolling off my back. And I've concluded that it's because uh, on the bottom I look down, which forces my upper body to lean forwards which really picks up my squat on the bench press I was uh, planning to hit 125 for an opener as you saw I opened up at 127 and a half kilograms and jumped up to 137 and a half that was because I was planning to do 142 and a half kilograms 
My coach meant that 137 and a half kilograms looked too heavy. So we played it safe and did 140, which means that I beat Uber Gim to 140. <laughs> How do you feel? To be honest, it was a competition between me and, uh, and the, uh, the girl you sometimes work out with, Kaki, I think her name is. <laughs> long, long blonde hair, you know. We all, we all, we all knew you were going to be. What fun. did you call her? <laughs> Censored, I see. <laughs> Uh, moving on to the deadlift During the warm-up, I really felt good my last warm-up set was 205 kilograms and it moved like 140 at that point. I definitely felt that one two for 250 was gonna go easy my opening was 225 felt lighter than ever I Did a new PR on my second attempt was which was 240 Super easy. Uh, I was just at that point. I was just expecting it to fly up. So, but during my preparation for the 250, one of the coaches for the other lifters came over to me and commented on my pre-workout, which I've been using for like ever, and told me it was laced with drugs. <clears throat> which really uh, really f with my focus and I, I've talked with my coach about it afterwards and he assures me it's doping free and it's sold all, all over Norway which is one of the strictest countries when it comes to supplements I think if I had my focus I could have done 255, 260 that day. No problem. But that's the way, just the way it is. That wraps it up. Thanks for watching this awesome powerlifting meet video. If you like this video, like it, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, Daggy Fitness. Follow this, put at Ubagim. See you guys next week.